The big game of week one is the Clemson Tigers against the Georgia Bulldogs. That is not a surprise. Everyone has been talking about it for quite some time. And now we finally get to see what these two teams are capable of doing. This is a very intriguing matchup and two teams that are in kind of different positions, but both teams are expecting to compete for a national championship. And the Georgia Bulldogs come in after a 13-1 season, a season in which they were left out of the college football playoff. This is a team that is very motivated, very ready to showcase their talent and showcase their dominance. And they are ready to do that against anyone. It does not matter who they face. They are ready to send a message in week one to the rest of college football, a team that averaged over 40 points per game and on defense averaged under 16. This is a team that wants to score a ton of points and absolutely demolish anybody in their way defensively. Clemson is trying to get back to that point. The offense has taken kind of a step back, which has kind of also affected the defense, but this is the defense for Clemson that I think can get back to what we saw under Brent Venables. They have plenty of talent. They have an elite defensive line that has a bright future. And it's just a matter of, can this offense get back to where they once were? This is a team that is hurting for offensive explosiveness. And I'm really intrigued to see how this group takes that to the next level. Garrett Riley has a lot of work to do, but I think that you've seen some signs and you brought in plenty of talent that can make that happen. It's just, we'll dive into what needs to, to go right for them in order for them to be in that position. Now, Georgia is currently favored by 13 and a half. And that's really interesting because it speaks to how, again, how motivated Georgia is, but also maybe what Clemson is going up against. And we obviously know that Georgia is the better team right now. That shouldn't really be a surprise, but I think that Clemson has an opportunity to make a statement of their own. And I don't even necessarily think that Clemson has to win to let everybody know it's going to be different. If, if you keep Georgia's offense in check, that tells you that the defense is in a good spot to compete with really good teams. Because again, Georgia is going to be a college football playoff contender. So even if you lose to Georgia, I think that there are still plenty of uh, things you can see, plenty of messages that can be sent about Clemson that tell you, hey, they're just, that's not the Clemson we saw last year or the Clemson that we've seen the last couple of years. So there are definitely things that Clemson do. Obviously, winning sends a message that it speaks loudly to college football, but there's also ways for them to make a statement without winning that football game. The burning questions, it fits into this kind of well. For Clemson, is do they have it in them? Do they have the ability to pull off this upset? In years past, you know, when you look at the Taj Boyd days, the Deshaun Watson days, even Trevor Lawrence, you would have answered this question with a profound yes. This is a Clemson team that is very capable of beating Georgia in those years. But lately, Georgia and Clemson kind of feel like they're in two different atmospheres. They are on two different planets. They are just not on the same level. But Clemson is trying to get back to that point. And I think everybody in the program knows that. Everybody knows what everyone's talking about, about the Clemson Tigers. And that roster is very aware of what everyone expects their shortcomings to be. But do they have it in them? to scare Georgia. Again, it does not have to be an upset. You do not have to win this football game to send a message. You can still lose, but have a really strong performance where you keep the game close or you keep Georgia in check for a while. And that says a lot about this team, but do they have it in them to pull off that upset? That's going to be a big question there. Georgia's question for me is how focused can they be? Now, this is not a question of questioning Kirby Smart's ability to get his team locked in. This is a team that understands what happened last year. They are very aware that they felt snubbed, and that was a team that felt like they could have won a national championship. They definitely felt like they could beat Michigan, and they just didn't get the job done when they needed to, and they got left out. Now, they are coming back with a purpose, and they are going to be focused. The question is, how focused are they going to be in week one? And I'm not saying that they are going to actually crush, but a blowout win or a, you know, a multi-touchdown win against Clemson says a lot about how scared everyone else should be. Now it is week one. There are going to be things that go wrong. There are going to be certain things that Clemson does to, to throw off their game, puts a wrinkle in their, uh, their game plan. It's just a matter of, of adapting and also how focused and how ready to go. Can you be, there are some new faces 
that are going to be playing a big role for both offense and defense. We'll obviously dive into that here in a little bit, but you have different pieces coming in. You have some moving pieces that could make this interesting, but I think that Georgia has the ability to get locked in pretty early and send a message right off the bat. Now the matchup to watch is going to be Cade Klubnick against Georgia's defense, because this tells me everything I need to know right now about both teams. If Cade Klubnick has a strong performance, he makes smart reads. He does not turn the ball over pushes the ball downfield, then I know that Clemson is in a better place. And I feel more optimistic about what they can do in 2024. For Georgia, if you are making his life miserable, which we saw in the past, we've seen teams do that to Cade Klubnik, and it has not gone well for Clemson. If Georgia is swarming him and getting in the backfield as much as possible, that is going to be a long game for the Clemson Tigers and for Cade Klubnik. And this is already projected to be a lower scoring game. So we'll see what happens when Georgia is doing exactly what they want to do and how Clemson can respond. If Clemson responds well and Klubnik is making some really good plays, you're feeling pretty good about Clemson's chances to stick in this game for the long run. And we'll find out what happens. But Georgia has a lot of talent to pay attention to if you're a Clemson Tigers fan. Carson Beck obviously is the first one we'll talk about. That shouldn't be a, a really a surprise. Carson Beck is a future first round pick if he can play at the level that we've seen from him in the past. He is someone who has a good frame at 6'4", 220 pounds, had over 3,900 yards and 24 touchdowns in 2023. And he is someone who Georgia is going to rely on offensively. I think that you have a good set of pass catchers returning. You have a number of players that are going to make life miserable for any defense that Georgia plays. And if he can find ways to just get them the football, sometimes you're going to see he, he does not need to make these big time throws all the time with guys like Trevor Etienne in the backfield. You have Colby Young. You have a number of players coming back and, and Dominic Lovett, Oscar Delp. You have a number of talented players that are going to make your life easy. So, yes, sometimes Carson Beck is going to have to make some big time throws and he's very capable of doing that. But also sometimes. Just get the ball to your guy and let him do the work. Carson Beck does not have to be a hero. And if Georgia is going to dominate, it's when he's going to know, hey, I need to make a play here or my guy is going to get the job done. And I think that he's done a good job of that last year. And you're going to see that from him again in 2024. Now, defense is going to be kind of the same thing. If the defensive line feels like it's in a really good spot, you have Michael Williams coming back. You have Chas Chambliss coming at that linebacker, outside linebacker, edge player. He is going to be fun to watch, someone who could take a big step up, but it's the linebacker position that really intrigues me. There's a reason why Jamon Dumas Johnson left for Kentucky, and it's because guys like Smail Munded are coming back, but also Jalen Walker and C.J. Allen are going to be phenomenal at that position as well. Smail Munded has that ability to get out in space. He can cover in space. He can get to the ball carrier. He has that quickness, and he's also added to his frame. He is 235 pounds now. It's not that sleek frame that you saw from him a couple of years ago. He has definitely put in the work with his body and he's taken the weight room, obviously very seriously paid attention to his nutrition. And now he's going to be the leader of that linebacker group. And he's got two guys next to him that are going to be really fun to watch as well. On the back end of things, Malachi Starks is going to be someone who has to bring in a couple of new faces to get things going. But I think that you're looking at a very good secondary for Georgia. Malachi Starks is a potential first round pick, and it's just a matter of how well and how consistently he can play at that level. You feel pretty good in, in Georgia with Kirby Smart running things there. Glenn Schumann's going to be putting together a really nice defense, and that's going to make it very difficult for Clemson to move the ball down the field. Now, the Clemson Tigers, everybody is watching Hate Club Nick. There's really not a ton of players that you're going to see under the spotlight or under more scrutiny than Cade Klubnik. And it's obviously, uh, you, it's very obvious why people are going to do that. When you struggle as much as you, you've done uh, for Clemson, the quarterback position is going to be the first thing they look at. And the rushing attack probably hasn't been what it's needed to be, but also the quarterback position has taken a step back. When you had DJ Uyangalale, you thought Cade Klubnik was going to be the answer when he struggled. When Cade Klubnik has struggled, I haven't really had anybody behind him that you can lean on or look to and say, well, maybe it's that guy. Tate is, is going to be your answer or you're going to have a long year. 
And there are some things that I, I really am intrigued to see. You're going into year two of Garrett Riley's system. And I think that's that's going to do a lot to settle him down. He knows what the reads are. He knows what the checks are. He understands the playbook a little bit better, and he can get his guys into better positions. Now, some of the players that are going to help him out, one of them is Phil Maffa. Phil Maffa's ability to run the football, and some people think that Maffa ran the ball better than Will Shipley did that last year. I think that there are some people that believe he's going to be the better back, and we'll find out this year. We'll see what this offensive line can do for him. We'll see what he's capable of doing as a running back. But this is a team that has plenty of talent to get the ball downfield. Antonio Williams could be a big time player. Tyler Brown, you have a number of sketchers that maybe haven't stepped up as much as you want, but also you have, the, you've seen the talent, you've seen what they're capable of doing. And you know that this is a team that has what it takes because of the recruiting efforts. You look at what the, where Clemson's ranked. There's no reason why the offense should struggle as much as it has. It's just they need to find a way to get themselves into position to compete at a high level. And you have to obviously, you know, you have to get going right off the bat. Playing Georgia is not going to be easy. But again, it's not that Clemson's lacking in the talent. They just have to find ways to put the right guys on the field and find a way to create more separation, create more explosive plays. I really like what Clemson can do. We'll see if they can actually do that. It's going to be tough in week one. That is a Georgia team that is very good, but Clemson is looking to make a state of their own. The defense we talked about before, we'll start with the defensive line. Peter Woods is an absolute stud. And when you look at this defensive line, we've seen a number of elite defensive lines for the Clemson Tigers. This feels like this is going to be another one of those groups in a long line of what has been really fun groups to watch. Peter Woods is one of those guys, has really good size where you can maybe slide him in if you need to, but also can play defensive end. Opposite of him is T.J. Parker, a freshman last year, who stepped in and played really well right off the bat. That's going to be fun to watch as well. That's a good pair of defensive ends that are going to make life miserable for the teams they face, even Clemson or even Georgia. Georgia is going to have a really good offensive line that is going to make life for Woods and Parker very difficult, but they're also elite players that can make – the same thing happened for those guys as well. They can make life very difficult for Georgia's offensive line. Derek Carter decided to return. That was a really fun returnee for the Clemson Tigers. And that's going to be fun to see how he handles his new role as some of the leader of that defense. Jeremiah Trotter Jr. is gone. And now you turn the reins over to Barry Carter. So this is a very intriguing game. This is going to be a fun game to watch because we're going to learn a lot about both teams. You're going to learn if Clemson has in fact taken that step or if it's just Georgia is just so much better than the Clemson Tigers. Dabo Sweeney obviously has been under a lot of scrutiny for his inability to not inability, just unwillingness to use the transfer portal, kind of a, a tired narrative if you're a Clemson fan, but at the same time, he is betting on his guys. If there's a definition of betting on your players, it is Davo Sweeney and what his his belief is with the guys that he brings in. He recruits at a level where he believes that he has the right guys on campus. He does not need the transfer portal to help him. And if that's true, this Clemson team is going to surprise some people. But if it's not, the questions about Davo Sweeney and what he is doing in this new era of college football are only going to continue. So if they find a way to make a statement, those kind of go away. If not, it's just going to keep things going. Both teams are motivated for this game. You obviously, how could you not be? It's week one against, you know, with two teams that are in the top 25, two teams that have national championship aspirations. You really can't get much better than this. And you have the narratives in place that make this game extremely intriguing for so many reasons.